Naruto is recovered from one of Orochimaru's labs in Konoha. Experimented on his life is irrevocably changed and a new, darker Naruto emerges. Plant Master. Naruto. But before we start, be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Now let's begin. Inside the seal a blonde-haired crimson-eyed man groaned from inside of the seal. His voice was muffled as his head was lowered into his clawed hands. His hands lowered to the seat he was sitting in as a fresh wave of pain from his son assaulted his senses. His hands clenched around the arm rest causing it to groan. With a roar of anger he jumped to his feet and threw the chair against the wall causing it to break before it reformed itself. Damn them. Damn the civilians and the council. And damn you Orochimaru for stealing my son, he roared. Vicious red chakra boiled around him. It was totally different from his old chakra, it almost burned with power. He was glad that his plan to help his son had worked. Originally the seal, created by one of his wife's ancestors, was designed to seal the soul of a powerful entity in a young child with the help of the death god, Shinigami-sama. Kashina and he had, through experimentation, tweaked the seal so that it would take both his and Kayubi's souls. His soul would be bound to the Kayubi's power while the demon's soul would be sealed away and be kept unconscious. He would have access to the demon's power and would be able to provide guidance for his precious son. It had done its job, ripping the soul of the Kayubi and its chakra from its body but nothing could have prepared him for the pain he felt. He had felt a terrible tearing sensation in his own chest before his consciousness was pulled out of his body. His plan had not come without cost though. He had been forced to sleep for over four years. When he had awoken he had discovered that while merging with the Kayubi's power he now had access to all of the old demon's memories. It had given him a headache worse than the hangover after the week-long bender at the end of the last war. It was a while later that he had been able reviewed his son's memories to get to know him and catch up on Naruto's life. What he saw angered and horrified him. Instead of being placed with a loving caring family he had been placed in an orphanage. The workers there were cold and distant with his son. All aside from a teenage worker named Megumi, a black-haired, blue-eyed girl of 15. She had been the orphanage's only saving grace in Minato's opinion, showering his son with love and affection whenever she was able to. The head of the orphanage was a crook and it appalled Minato the things that the man had gotten away with because of the orphanage's being overcrowded. He was trafficking and selling the children for Kami's sakes. Fortunately the Sandame and his old sensei took time out of their busy schedules to help Naruto after he was kicked out of the orphanage when he was three. Jiraiya had temporarily moved back to Konoha and purchased an apartment for himself and Naruto to live in, having sold his old one since he traveled so much. Jiraiya along with the Sandame had taught him many things including to read and write, which Naruto excelled at like he had. He was proud at how smart his son appeared to be. It was clear that he would be one of the smartest people in Konoha as long as his mind was challenged and allowed to grow. Pretty soon though it had become apparent that Jiraiya's spy network needed him in person. Jiraiya had had to leave and Naruto was left only under the guidance of the Sandame. The Sandame was busy a lot of the time though, he resumed his post as Hokage and couldn't keep as close an eye on his son as he wished. Minato had watched Hiruzen, a man he both had great respect and affection for, visibly aging before his eyes. The council had been vying for more and more power since his death. They had tried it during his reign as well but he had quickly and sometimes brutally shut down their ambitions. The crippled bastard Danzo was the worst with his stealthy undermining the Sandame and trying to get his son inducted into his shadowy Anbu Corp route. He clearly hoped to turn his son into an emotionless weapon to further his ambitions. Then the second darkest day of Naruto's young life happened. Danzo's careful maneuvering paid off. Naruto had gone out to get something to eat but had gotten lost. It was well after dark and he had been scared since he was in a section of town he had never been into before. An Anbu agent had come up to him as if to offer help and Naruto had thought nothing of it since they had helped him out before. It was not to be this time since as soon as he got close the man had knocked him out. He woke some time later to find himself strapped down in a cold and sterilized room with an old one-eyed man and a man with scary slitted eyes standing in front of him. You have the Jinchuriki now Orochimaru. The elderly ninja had growled. It is agreed that you will perform your experiments and then share your findings with me. With them we can produce even better tools to change the world as we see fit. Of course. Orochimaru hissed, his eyes shining with greed as he looked at Naruto. It infuriated Minato. 
Do not worry yourself Danzo San Kukuku. I will fulfill our agreement. For four months his son was experimented on by Orochimaru himself before the lab had been found by the Sandame, Jiraiya and a platoon of loyal Anbu. Minato scowled at the chair before sitting in it once more. He rubbed his forehead as he tried to think about what he could do with the situation. The sound of voices speaking brought him out of his musing. Outside Naruto's mind beep. 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 That was all the noise heard in the small white room. The three occupants of the room were silent as the fourth performed tests. One was an old wrinkled man with white and red robes. A strange hat with the kanji for fire lied on his head while an unlit pipe hung from his lips. He was Serutobi Hirazan, the Sandame Hokage. The next one, while older, wasn't as old as the other man and had long, spiky white hair. A horned metal plate with the kanji for oil held it up in the front and away from his eyes. He looked sadly upon the smaller figure in the bed. He was Jiraiya the Toadsanin. The figure in the bed was Uzumaki Naruto, son of the Yandaimi Hokage Namakaze Minato and Uzumaki Kashina, and Jiraiya's godson. He laid in the bed almost deathly pale and strangely big for a four, almost five-year-old child. His normally spiky blonde hair seemed to hang limply on his head, his long bangs casting shadows over his closed eyelids. Damn you Orochimaru, haven't you done enough to our team? Now you've gone against someone else I truly care for. Jiraiya thought as his hands fisted by his sides. He resisted the urge to hit something like his female teammate tended to do when something upset her. He felt the final bonds he still felt for his teammate break as he looked upon the sleeping body of his godson. How is he Hajira? Serutobi asked. It would seem that the experiments had several effects on him Hokage-sama. The doctor, Hazenki Hajira, a close personal friend of the Sandame replied. His already large chakra stores have been forcibly grown and matured along with his chakra pathways. About a dozen new chakra pathways have been opened in his mind allowing him to think faster and he should be noticeably more intelligent. His joints seem to have become more flexible, more like cartilage than bone, which should allow them to contort in odd angles and make dodging easier. His muscles have also become lighter and more compact making them exponentially stronger than they would normally be. I imagine that Naruto-san will be physically quite strong in the future, even without training. He paused briefly to scan the notes on his clipboard before continuing. Unfortunately the cosmetics are permanent. His canines have elongated, while his fingernails have lengthened, sharpened and hardened turning them into claws. His visions has likely become more advanced and he might have greater night vision. The downside being that his pupils seem to be permanently slitted now. The villagers might become unsettled, especially considering what he contains. I doubt the shinobi will mind all that much thaws. Hajira finished looking sadly at the boy. Damn you Orochimaru. Jiraiya cursed clenching his fists. Are there any other complications? Serutobi asked. Yes. As you can see he has been artificially aged somehow. While his mind is that of an four-year-old his body is physically four years older. I imagine that he will mature faster than his natural age when it comes to hormones as well. Though his body does appear to be in peak condition. Whether this is an effect of the experiments or his tenant is unknown. I am positive that if you hadn't gotten to him as quickly as you did he would have continued to age. Hazenki replied. I have also discovered that the genes for his mother's special ability have been activated but. He hesitated slightly, scratching his head with his pen. But what? Seru Tobi prompted him. From what we can tell it seemed to have mutated slightly. Hazenki finally replied. We can't be sure what effects this will have. Only time will tell whether they have weakened or strengthened into a true bloodline ability. Interesting. Seru Tobi spoke, scratching his cheek thoughtfully. I doubt that my former student would have wanted to weaken Naruto's connection with his powers. I doubt my former teammate would want to harm such interesting abilities. Jiraiya spat unknowingly echoing his sensei's thoughts. Quite. Seru Tobi spoke stroking his goatee. Will it be detrimental to his health? Jiraiya asked worriedly. Not that I can see at all Jiraiya-sama. Hazenki replied smiling gently. But as I said only time will tell. How long will he need to stay in the hospital? Seru Tobi asked. I would like to keep him here for at least two weeks to oversee any complications. Hazenki replied. There is also possible psychological damage to consider as well. He is to have the best medical care, regardless of price, Jiraiya told him. Please inform us if anything changes, 
Serutobi commanded him. Of course Hokage-sama. Hazanki replied with a bow. Eleven years later Naruto woke with a groan, carefully removing the slender leg that was thrown over his own. Sliding out his bed he made his way into the bathroom. Once he was done with his morning constitutional he walked towards the kitchen, absent-mindedly noticing a pile of packages stacked by his couch. His apartment was fairly good-sized for an orphan living on supplements with a living room, kitchen, a bedroom and a small bathroom with a shower and toilet. He even had a small balcony off his living room that could hang plants on. He considered himself lucky, his was one of the nicer apartments in his building. As he stretched up to get a box of pancake mix he happened to glance over to the other wall only to catch a glance of his father's picture. He smiled slightly as he remembered. Flashback Naruto groaned as he regained consciousness. Thankfully he wasn't in any pain so his captors must have stopped his experiments for a while. Breathing in he almost sighed in relief when he didn't smell sterilized air. Opening his eyes he immediately shut them again as bright light blinded him. Waiting 20 seconds he opened his eyes again. Looking around him he was surprised to see a forested clearing. On one side was tall trees, and a clear lake. On the other was a tall house and a training ground. He could see mountains in the background but they were pretty far away. How did I get here? Naruto wondered. Naruto. A deep male voice called out from behind him causing him to flinch and curl up into a ball. He felt the air around himself shift and caught sight of a white coat with orange flames before he closed his eyes tight. Baka. Minato thought as he hit himself in the head. Of course he'd react this way, especially since he doesn't recognize my voice. He carefully knelt next to the trembling form of his son. P please D don't hurt me. Naruto whispered softly. Oh Naruto. Minato sighed before scooping his son up into arms. He held him steadily even when he flinched in fear and held himself ridged. I'll never hurt you, nor will I ever let anyone hurt you again if I can help it. He sat on the ground and rocked his son back and forth for nearly 30 minutes before the boy settled down. Looking downwards he could smile as he saw that his son had fallen asleep. Sleep well my son. Minato whispered before carrying disappearing into the house with a trademark yellow flash. Moving carefully he laid him down on a big comfortable bed in one of the bedrooms he had conjured up for himself in his corner of Naruto's mindscape. It took very little of his power to keep Naruto in his mindscape since his son wasn't actively fighting him. He would let the exhausted boy sleep before speaking with him. It was nearly 12 hours before the boy awoke. He saw him cautiously surveying his new surroundings. I'm glad you're awake now Naruto. Minato said from his seat at the kitchen table calmly sipping a cup of tea. One might wonder how all of this was possible but the mind is a powerful thing is one of the most unexplored. Who are you? Naruto asked. This guy looks like the Yandaimi. But the Yandaimi is dead. I am Namakaze Minato. Minato replied smiling at him kindly confirming Naruto's theory on his identity. I was the Yandaimi Hokage. Dot and your father. Am my father? Naruto asked disbelievingly. Shaking hands dropped the glass of orange juice he had been handed. With nary a thought on Minato's part it was reformed and the glass refilled, though Naruto didn't notice. You're dead. Well yes I am in a sense. Minato chuckled. I died defeating the Kayubi. Then how are you here? Naruto asked sensibly. The man had said that he was dead. The Kayubi was a being of great power capable of great destruction and was immortal. It is thought to be impossible for a human to kill a biju, they can only be sealed into objects. Unfortunately the Kayubi was just too powerful to be sealed into any old object. Only something living could be used. It must be a newborn child with newly formed chakra coils so that they can expand safely and have time to get used to the beast's energy. You were turned into a Jinchuriki, a human sacrifice on October 10th. Minato replied sadly. You were born two days before the Kayubi attack and no others were born within the deadline of a week. It tore me apart inside to have to do that to you but I had no choice. I had to protect Konoha, it was my duty as Hokage. What about your duty as a father? Naruto yelled back at him, tears in his eyes. I took that into account as well, Minato said, head bowed. I knew how you were likely to be treated, as Jinchuriki are hardly ever given a fair shake in life. So with help I tweaked the seal, I tricked the Shinigami into sealing me inside of you with the Kayubi. While this happened another seal fused my soul and the Kayubi's power together. 
I got all of his power and access to its knowledge while also being able to be here to help you like I wanted to. I love you Naruto and I want to be there for you if you'll let me. What about my mother? Is she dead or did she abandon me because she thought I was a demon too? Naruto asked bitterly. No your mother died a day after you were born. Minato replied sadly hands clenching in pain in his lap. She had some medical problems and being pregnant had a detrimental effect on her health. Combined with your being a premature birth and the strain was too much for her. So she died because of me? Naruto asked tears coming to his eyes. No, Minato said urgently, getting up and hugging his son causing him to stiffen. Minato ignored it though to offer his son comfort. I'd never seen your mother happier than when she found out that she was pregnant with you. Her clan, the Uzumaki of Whirlpool or Uzugakure, had never been a particularly large clan since most of the women were affected by the same medical problems. She was proud to be a mother and loved you even before you were born. She called you her, little miracle. She never blamed you even when she was dying. She refused to give you up to the doctors before she died, she breathed her last still holding you in her arms. Minato noticed Naruto calming down so he released him and retook his seat. Why haven't you contacted me before? Naruto asked. I was asleep. Minato replied looking somewhat sheepish, he scratched the back of his head. I didn't know that it would take this long for the merger to happen. I woke up right after you were admitted to the hospital. I was disoriented for a while but eventually thought up this place, which is a copy of my old home, so we could have a place to talk. Luckily, even though I don't need to eat or drink, I can think of something and it appears for me. What happened to the Kayubi? Naruto asked. Come walk with me and I'll show you. Minato replied standing up. Naruto looked confused but followed his father anyway. His father led him outside into the large open front lawn. See that mountain over there? Naruto looked to where he was pointing and saw the mountain through squinted eyes. He felt his father grab his arm before he was hurtled forwards faster than he had ever ran. He stumbled a bit when they stopped before glaring at his father. Sorry about that. Minato replied sheepishly. That was the Shushin technique. It takes some getting used to at first, if you'll look forward. Naruto looked where his father had motioned and saw them at the base of the mountain. Looking upwards he was surprised to see a large cave with metal bars and a piece of paper with the kanji for seal on it. Stepping towards it he saw a red-furred fox seemingly sleeping inside. That's the Kayubi? Naruto asked. Yes. Minato replied. It is held unconscious behind the seal. It should stay that way forever. How come you're not behind the seal? Naruto asked. His father pointed to his hiat which Naruto now noticed had both the leaf symbol and the kanji for seal on it. Cool. Naruto replied. Indeed. Minato chuckled. I know about my father and the Kayubi. Naruto spoke to Jiraiya as he stared out the window of his godfather's apartment. It had been a week since he had gotten out and he had spent the time when he wasn't taking tests at the hospital to get to know his father. Naruto found him to be smart but he also had a great sense of humor. Jiraiya, who was in the middle of writing something in his ever-present notebook, snapped the pencil in his hand. Wa? He asked intelligibly. I said that I know about my father and the Kayubi. Naruto replied. It was the most he had spoken to his godfather since he'd woken up. Jiraiya pinched his nose. We best go talk to the old man about this. Jiraiya replied. Stand up and grip my arm, I'll shushin us to the Hokage Tower. Naruto stood and did as he was told. They reappeared outside of the Hokage office a few seconds later, only to be greeted by several armed Anbu. Stand down. The Hokage ordered having felt Jiraiya's chakra right before his arrival. Now, what do you need Jiraiya? Jiraiya stepped inside while motioning for Naruto to take one of the seats outside. He looked like he wanted to say something before his face closed off and he sat down. Jiraiya almost shivered at the change as normally energetic godson, it saddened him. The Gaki found out about you know who and you know what, Jiraiya whispered. Serutobi hummed before lighting his pipe. We knew this day would come, he said. I just didn't think it would be this early, Jiraiya replied dryly. It's dangerous for him to be knowing, even if he doesn't appear to be as outgoing as he used to be. I agree. Serutobi responded, but we can't keep his heritage from him now that he knows. It could only breed more resentment. Jiraiya winced. Naruto hadn't taken his imprisonment in Orochimaru's labs well. He had been giving them both the cold shoulder. All right. Jiraiya sighed before returning with Naruto. 
Seru Tobi was quick to put up several security-based jutsu of his own design. Please have a seat Naruto. Seru Tobi spoke. I am told that you know about your father and the Kayubi? Yes. Naruto replied simply. How is it you found out? Seru Tobi asked stalling for time even if he was genuinely curious. Tell them Naruto. His father's voice echoed from the back of his mind. We have to give something to receive something in return. I was contacted in my mind when I fell asleep. Naruto said looking down at the his clothes and fiddling with the hem of his shirt. The Kayubi contacted you? Seru Tobi asked tensely. No well it's complicated. Naruto mumbled hesitantly. It's all right Naruto take your time. Jiraiya urged him gently, even if he too was concerned. It wasn't really the Kayubi that contacted me. Naruto told them. What was it boy? Seru Tobi asked adding a little steel to his tone. Honestly he thought of the boy like another grandson but he didn't want him being influenced by the biju inside of him. It was my father. Naruto replied. He told me that he sealed the Kayubi inside of me after my mother's death and used a seal to merge with the demon's power and knowledge. Really? Jiraiya asked his eyebrows lifted in disbelief. And you believed him Naruto? Seru Tobi asked incredulously. The demon could be trying to trick you. It was a kitsune, who are known to be tricksters. They won't believe you Naruto. Minato spoke up. I'm going to have to come and speak with them. We knew that this might happen. You remember the hand sign I showed you? Yes father. Naruto replied. I believe him. Naruto replied firmly, and you will too. He made a hand sign causing red chakra to pulse around him alarming Seru Tobi and Jiraiya who knocked the Hokage desk out of the way and took up ready stances as the Anbu leapt from their hiding places. The red chakra bled off of Naruto before forming into a humanoid shape. As the red haze lifted a blonde-haired man with nine flowing tails, long claws and elongated fangs stood in front of them wearing his normal clothes. Hello Ero Senen, old man Seru Tobi-sama. Minato spoke up with a wave a cheeky grin, it's been a while. I will not fall for your tricks Kayubi. Jiraiya snarled surprising Naruto. He had never seen the man angrier. How dare you try to impersonate my student. Whoa, whoa Ero Senen. Minato said holding up his hands. I know that this will be hard to accept but really am Namikaze Minato but I am also the Kayubi in a sense. Oh. Seru Tobi asked not lowering his guard a bit. How is that? When Kashina and I was modifying the Shiki Fujin seal we found a way to add others that would allow my soul to be placed inside of the demon's vessel as well. It also allowed me to merge with the Kayubi's power, gaining its power and access to its knowledge so that I could help the Jinchuriki. I knew that the life of the Jinchuriki would be filled with strife no matter what so I decided to give him or her a leg up so to speak by helping to train them if they accepted. Minato told them scratching his chin before frowning. Unfortunately I didn't count on being asleep all this time and haven't been able to help Naruto aside from the yokai helping to accelerate his healing. Before you ask me to provide further proof, I'll go ahead. The night of my wedding Kashina kicked your ass because you tried spying on us to put it into one of your Icha Icha novels. When she beat you up she found the heart-shaped mark on your left buttocks. When she told Tsunade Obachan the next time she saw her she also gave you the beating of your life while laughing at you. Jiraiya blushed lightly while rubbing the back of his head. I also remember the conversation about yourself and Mizor san Minato told his sensei causing his face to turn serious with a slightly sad look before it returned to its normal cheery, perverted, self. Damn boy it's good to see you again. Jiraiya told Minato trying to give him a hug but passing through causing Minato to snicker at his sensei. Sorry Ero Senen. I can't really touch anything since my consciousness is still inside of the seal and my real body no longer alive. What you're seeing is actually a low-level kitsune illusion that allows me to talk to you outside of the seal. Minato told him looking somewhat sad that he couldn't touch anything anymore. Minato you never cease to amaze me, even after death. Sarutobi said shaking his head in amazement. The things you learned to do with seals. Thanks Hiruzen. Minato replied rubbing the back of his head with a grin. I'm hoping that Naruto will take after me and his mother's family when it comes to the ability with seals. If he does I'll try and teach him everything I know. What happened to the Kayubi? Serutobi asked. It is still sealed inside of Naruto but it is locked up and unconscious. Minato informed him. With the seals applied it should never awaken. That's good. Serutobi sighed in relief. 
So Naruto knows about his parents now. Jiraiya spoke up trying to steer the conversation back on point. Every time I asked you told me you didn't know who they were. Naruto asked somewhat angry. Serutobi winced. Yes I did, didn't I? Serutobi said as though musing. Honestly it was to protect you. Your parents had many enemies outside of Konoha and even some inside of it. They would seek to control or harm you so we lied. Danzo. Minato grumbled. I should have taken care of him when I had the chance. Something always seemed to come up when I had the free time though. Yes well he has his uses. Serutobi replied not wanting to get too deep into it. Both Jiraiya and Minato snorted but let the subject drop. His time will come. Minato growled getting a nod of agreement from Jiraiya. I'm sorry you had to find out this way Naruto. Jiraiya told him, squeezing his shoulder only to let go when Naruto flinched. I would have loved to have told you earlier, to have told you stories about both of them. It's time for you to know the full truth now that you've discovered your parents and the Kayubi. Serutobi spoke up. Taking a deep breath he stood and walked towards the wall behind him. Taking out a kanai he sliced his palm before using the blood to draw several seals on the seemingly normal wooden wall. A bright light shone briefly before the wall itself lifted off the floor revealing a large metal safe half the size of the wall. Smearing his blood on another seal he waited before quickly putting in the passcode. There was a hissing noise as the safe pressurized and air rushed inside. Looking inside Naruto could see many different smaller lockboxes. He watched as Serutobi opened two of them and pulled out two long metal boxes. He could see small name tags on them. M. Namikaze K. Uzumaki, these were to be kept for you until you were informed about your parents and their estates. Serutobi said as he set them on top of his desk. We had planned on telling you after you became Chunin or 16 years of age. We hoped by that time that you would be able to take care of yourself and would know the value of discretion. Since you know the truth already though neither Jiraiya nor myself think they should be kept from you anymore. Your father as you know was Namikaze Minato, the Yandaimi Hokage, nicknamed the Kiroi Senku. He was born here in Konoha, one of the last of his clan which originated in Aim. Your mother on the other hand wasn't born here but in Uzugakure, the land of Whirlpool which was destroyed when she was 12 during a joint attack by Iwagakure and Kumogakure so that they could not aid Konoha. She arrived here with several refuges including her aunt Mukiko. Her name was Uzumaki Kashina, nicknamed the Red Death for her powerful Kenjutsu techniques and fierceness in battle. Where was Kashina buried? Minato asked his eyes slightly glassy. He hadn't had much time to grieve the death of his wife and closest friend. She was buried beside her aunt who had died a few years earlier from pancreatic cancer. Serutobi told them, providing the last part for Naruto's benefit. Her name was placed on the hero's monument. What about my father, me? Naruto and Minato asked at the same time. Minato looked quite nonchalant about talking about his own corpse. He was buried in the Hokage Memorial. Jiraiya replied. Near to the Shodem and Nidame. We wanted them buried together but the council wouldn't see it since there was no official proof of their marriage. Serutobi replied. I had a marriage certificate but I couldn't release it without endangering Naruto further. Damn them. Minato growled. So I am a Jinchuriki. Naruto spoke up turning the conversation another way. Does this mean that I am to be a weapon for Konoha now that I know? No Naruto, never as long as I can help it. Serutobi spoke to him sincerely. The civilian council and Danzo wanted you to be but I put a stop to those thoughts as soon as possible. Still, some of the villagers still look at me as a scapegoat because of what my father did that night. Naruto replied as he fingered a scar on his arm. You must understand Gaki that it wasn't an easy thing for your father to decide. He assured him. It ate him up inside to have to do that to his own son. He broke down in my arms when he found out that he had to do it. It was agonizing for him. You were only a few hours old but he loved you more than almost anything in the world. But not more than Konoha. Naruto replied somewhat bitterly. What Jiraiya sensei said is true. Minato confirmed with a mixed look of love and pride towards his son. I never did it because I wanted a weapon for Konoha or because I wanted you hurt. I wanted the village to see you as a hero. Some of them didn't listen though. Thankfully you haven't had it nearly as bad as some of the foreign Jinchuriki. I thank Kami for that. It is the duty of the Hokage to put the safety of the village before anything else. Serutobi told him. It sounds simple in theory but it's one of the hardest things a Hokage has to do. 
My relationship with my own family isn't as great as it would be if I wasn't the Hokage. I have to send my own children out on missions knowing that they could die at any time. That does sounds hard. Naruto replied grudgingly. It is my boy, it is. Serutobi replied his voice turning sad. His mind flashed to the face of his oldest son Aigumo who had been killed during a counter-assault against Iwa. Jiraiya took the initiative to get the conversation back on track. We want you to know that even if you have the Kayubi sealed inside of you it doesn't make you a demon as well. Jiraiya spoke trying to assure him. No matter what any idiot tells you. A lot of them are still grieving for lost family members but some are just doing it because others are. It's called the crowd mentality. Keep in mind that while a person can be smart and reasonable, a group of people are usually idiots. Jiraiya smiled gently at Naruto as he gripped his shoulder. You especially aren't a demon giving the new circumstances. Jiraiya told him, nodding towards his father. Even if the Kayubi had been able to take over your body it won't be able to now. Your parents left nearly everything to you in their wills, including deeds to an apartment building, several stores and other businesses, investments and the Namakaze clan compound along with a sizable bank account. Serutobi told him. Unfortunately the apartment building has fallen into some disrepair and the Namakaze compound was partially destroyed during the Kayubi attack in the subsequent years without cleaning. Why wasn't it ever fixed up? Especially since it was the Yandaimi's home, Naruto asked confused. It's against Konoha clan laws for civilians or shinobi outside of clans to do anything to a clan compound without the permission of the clan head. Since there was no clan head nobody was able to fix it or tear it down. Minato supplied. Besides would you really want someone you don't know rummaging through your stuff? There have been several attempts to steal relics and technique scrolls from the compound but luckily they are all sealed in an underground bunker beneath the main clan house with numerous complex seals. Also there is a chakra barrier around the house fueled by nature chakra. Serutobi picked up. Unfortunately it still can't be fixed since you have to be at least Chunin rank in order to claim the title of Namakaze clan head according to your clan bylaws. The only reason I know was I tried to look up some way to help you without revealing your heritage to the village and the rest of the elemental nations. Trust what he says son. The Namikaze clan headship will be waiting for you when you're ready. Minato spoke up. Which won't be for some time. It's not worth taking up until you're mature enough, both physically and mentally. It can be a taxing job. So that's why you pushed me to a be a ninja so hard. Naruto asked his godfather and his honorary grandfather, his eyebrow raised in question. Yes. Serutobi responded. It was the only way for you to be able to receive your father's legacy. Civilians aren't allowed to rule your clan. Which I've always found stupid since not everyone wants to be a shinobi. Unfortunately nobody wanted to change the rules. Minato informed him. I was going to but I couldn't be clan head and hokage at the same time. Your mother was a foreign kunoichi, and the war didn't really leave a lot of time for politics, clan or otherwise. What about the bank accounts? Naruto asked. Can I access them if I need to? Unfortunately no, Serutobi replied with a grimace. Though there is a trust fund set up for you. I've also set some money aside for you as well Gaki. Jiraiya told him. To help with your educations and essentials. Naruto. Serutobi said bringing his attention to him. We need to talk to you more about what happened when you were kidnapped by Orochimaru. Okay. Naruto replied his face turning colder. He performed some experiments on you. Serutobi told him. Not just ones that are reflected on the outside either. The main thing he did was to mold a power your mother had to control and create plants into a real bloodline. How powerful it is we'll only know in time. However your mother did leave her journals on learning to control it in case any of her descendants received it. Flashback and unfortunately now that he was a genin he would have to quit his normal job working as a construction and repair worker which helped pay for things he needed like groceries or spare ninja tools. Luckily he didn't need to buy his medicinal herbs since he grew those himself. He made medicine as a side job and sold them at a reduced rate so that the locals didn't always have to go to the main hospital and pay their inflated prices. Hopefully he could take missions without his team so he wouldn't have to split the money with them. Sighing he flipped on his coffee maker before walking towards the fridge. Opening it up he pulled out a box of eggs and bacon. Soon he was whistling as he flipped a steaming pancake onto an already done stack. Mmm, that does smell good. A throaty voice purred in his ear as a pair of arms encircled his waist. The sound of the person's voice brought a rare smile to his face. 
Turning around he hugged the girl back. Standing behind him was one of his best friends Cassandra, a street orphan. The colored girl had long braided dreadlocks, and strangely enough, green eyes. Her left eyebrow and nostril were both pierced with small silver hoops while both of her ears were pierced four times. She had a three-inch scar that ran down her right cheek from a knife wound. She had hated it until Naruto told her that it gave her character. She was several inches shorter than Naruto even though she was four years older. Incidentally Naruto had saved her from a drunken man who hadn't wanted to pay for her services but wanted them anyway. When she refused he had taken out a knife and tried to stab her. Something had snapped inside of Naruto's mind when he saw her being attacked and he quickly became very angry. Luckily Naruto had been able to pull her out of the way of the man's strike, which was pretty clumsy anyway, so she was only cut on the cheek. He had then proceeded to beat the drunken man into unconsciousness before tossing him in front of the military police headquarters tied up. After finding out that she lived on the streets Naruto had invited her to live with him. She had quickly proved that she was worthy of his trust by helping him learn things better and she even helped him around his apartment, keeping it tidy and for the most part being there for him when he needed someone to talk to. Just some breakfast. Naruto told her. Can you slice up the oranges? I want to make some fresh orange juice. Sure. Cassandra replied getting out a chopping knife. Naruto had become good friends with Dr. Hazenki who became his personal physician, not that he needed it often due to his advanced healing rate. The doctor had even taught him some simple medical techniques, some using chakra, while others did not. He had learned, through her journals, about his mother's special ability which he called Midoriro Ketsueki or green blood and more about her as a person. The bloodline gave him the ability to control and create plants sort of like Mokotan except it was more versatile in his opinion. On the downside it was doubtful that he would be able to use it control or calm biju. A positive thing his opinion though, was that he actually created plants from chakra unlike Mokotan which used existing seeds in the air or ground, and it didn't even have to be existing plants, his imagination was the limit. Though it did cost quite a bit of chakra depending on the size and complexity of the plants. The mutation to his DNA from Orochimaru's experiments only seemed to have enhanced his abilities giving him an almost prodigious control over his bloodline, certainly better than his mother had had even when she was years older than he was. He spent a lot of his spare time learning how to use it easier and in more creative ways. He had also picked up some less than legal skills over the years including computer hacking and lock picking. Computers were a fairly new invention in the elemental nations, imported from the west through snow country, with mostly only the biggest cities and hidden villages having them. Ouch. Cassandra hissed as she sliced her finger open with the knife she was using. Naruto dropped what he was doing and grabbed her hand. It didn't look to be too bad nor would it require stitches. Thinking quickly he went through several one-handed hand signs for one of the few medical jutsu Hazenki had taught him. His hand glowed green briefly before the cut closed itself. After he cleaned off the blood he kissed it. Better? Naruto asked. Hi. Cassandra replied, blushing slightly at the intimate action. Perhaps I should keep the knives away from you? Naruto asked with a smirk only to get clipped on the ear. Baka. Cassandra hissed but her face showed that she was clearly amused. Once breakfast was done Naruto got up to wash the dishes but was interrupted by Cassandra. I will wash the dishes later, why don't you go open the packages in the living room? She told him before placing the dishes inside of the sink. Walking into the living room Naruto found a stack of wrapped packages waiting for him. There's some from the Sandame, Jiraiya, Kakashi and Aruka, Cassandra told him. Grabbing the top package, which was wrapped in orange paper, he picked the note off it. Brat. Congratulations on finally graduating the academy. Even though I know that you could have graduated earlier, inside are some technique scrolls one have acquired on my travels that will fit your elemental alignments. Plus a special notebook I have added some seals to. It will allow you to safely write and store any ideas you come up with for new jutsu. It also has a seal that makes it so it never runs out of paper as well. Yane, your lovable, chick magnet godfather that was nice of him. His father spoke up for the first time that morning, having been purposefully ignoring his son's time with his friend, giving them privacy. Sounds useful too. Naruto replied. Opening the box he saw nine sealed scrolls and the notebook. Five of them had the kanji for each of the five elements, which he had access to thanks to his tenant's chakra. The other three appeared to be three different styles of taijutsu. The notebook was fairly small 
only about 6 inches wide and 5 inches long, and about a fourth of an inch thick with a dark green hard cover with an of vines and leaves embossed on it, outlined in gold. Picking up the heaviest package he opened it to find two new bundles of 30 kanai and shuriken, two 20-foot rolls of ninja wire, a small package of exploding tags, a box of condoms, lubricating gel and a travel guide with maps of every country in the elemental nations with helpful notes scribbled in his Nissan handwriting on the sides. Otouto, I thought you might need these now that you're a genin. I've got my own genin team this year again as well. If they pass it'll mean less time for us to spar but don't even think about slacking off. Kakashi P.S. figured the personal items might help you out in your personal life. Teehee. Who does that pervert think he's talking to? Naruto wondered, though he wasn't really angry. Kakashi was good to him over the years even going out of his way to help teach him some taijutsu moves or just taking him out to eat to talk. He still hadn't found a style that really suited him but he was always looking around. He had eventually become somewhat of an older brother to him but he still annoyed Naruto with trying to hook him up with girls when he was 10. Really even though I was physically older and had hit puberty I still had a 10-year-old mind sheesh, Naruto thought with a chuckle. That's Kakashi for you. Minato replied laughing himself. But at least you've still got those blackmail photos. Naruto snickered at he thought about the blackmail. He had caught his knee sand coming out of the shower in only a towel, without his mask on. Naruto threatened to post it all over Konoha if he didn't teach him. Ripping the paper from a long cardboard box he found a heavy-duty vest the color of red with dark gray accents. The vest itself was actually quite heavy causing him to raise an eyebrow at it. The front could be zipped up and contained several several useful pockets. With it was a pair of dark gray cargo pants, also with many pockets and heavy as well, a tight dark gray turtleneck muscle shirt with sleeves that went down to the elbow pants made of the same material as the turtleneck, and a pair of dark gray armored gloves. The last thing inside was a pair of maroon and gray weapon holsters. Dear Naruto, I bought theses for you as congratulations for finally graduating. I know that you like the clothes you wear but these are somewhat special. Even if I'm not supposed to play favorites I want the boy I think of as a second grandson to be safe. The clothes weren't cheap so you'd best protect them. The vest and pants are an alternative choice to body armor. Sewn inside of them is a two layers of metal mesh armor with chakra weights behind them. The vest and pants will protect you and help to train your body at the same time. The special thing about the shirt is that it dampens chakra signatures allowing for easier hiding, is waterproof, helps regulate body temperature to keep your exposed skin a constant temperature. It can also repair itself by using your chakra, and can stretch, allowing the neck portion to be potentially used as a mask and to grow with you as you age. The pants that go with it actually go under your normal pants and can fuse, and unfuse, with the top allowing for a waterproof bodysuit. The gloves are also special in their own way as they can be used as an offensive weapon. If used without chakra added small metal plates in the knuckles will do blunt damage but if chakra is added then four blades will extend up to five inches from the knuckles adding a nasty surprise. I am trusting you with these Naruto because I know that you can use them responsibly and not for fooling around or spars against fellow Konoha Shinobi. With great affection, Serutobi, Gigi, Hirazan Naruto grinned before changing into the clothes. The shirt was a tight fit and the gloves were snug and went completely up his forearm to fuse with his shirt. Thanks Gigi. Naruto thought before adding an addition of his own. A belt that held several special pouches. What was special about them was that they had seals he had designed put on them so that they held far more than they appeared to be able to. Into one of the pouches came the items from the last package from Hazenki, a bottle of food, blood pills, a more advanced med kit, bandages, and couple of new medical technique scrolls. The last thing that went on was a dark red shirt with black flames along the bottom he had gotten from Aruka, who clearly knew what the sandame had gotten him. Looking into the mirror he thought, with a little vanity, that he looked good. Cassandra's appreciative whistle as she walked up to him told him that she agreed with him. She wrapped her arms around Naruto and ran her hands against his skin-tight shirt with a groan. Can't get enough of me huh? Naruto asked with a small cocky smirk. Well you're the one who wanted to wait until you graduated from the academy for us to have sex. Cassandra said glowering at him slightly with her hands on her hip. I only did it to protect you from the police force and council. Naruto told her as he hugged her slightly. People outside of his apartment would be shocked by the amount of physical contact he was allowing since he normally didn't allow others close or to touch him. 
I was still considered underage then remember? And not an active shinobi. Yeah, yeah. She mumbled as she kissed his neck before placing her lips on his chin and sliding them upwards. Naruto pushed his excitement against her while deepening the kiss causing her to moan a little. She pulled away from him with a smirk causing him to grunt. That doesn't mean I won't punish you for it. Cassandra wagged a finger at him. But you'll be punished as well. Naruto retorted reasonably. No sex for him meant no sex for her. I have my fingers and my toys. She replied a wicked smile on her face running a sharp nail down his front causing him to shiver. Anyways you'd better go if you don't want to be late. Alright. Naruto replied slightly reluctant. Make a hand sign he watched as a large group of clones materialized from midair. I love this technique. Naruto smirked. I really do. He really did ever since his father had taught it to him. Even with his better than average chakra control he still wasn't able to limit it enough to the tiny amount needed for a bunshin technique. One which he found pretty useless anyways. Everyone split up. I want ten of you working on each new elemental technique the pervert sent me. Ten of you will work on my bloodline, twenty-five will work on target practice and kenjutsu, chakra control, seals and finally on producing and analyzing new potions and poisons. Dismissed. Hi. Hi Tai Cho, for science. Cassandra giggled as she heard all of the clones reply. Naruto only rolled his eyes. Finally he repeated the technique again creating nine more, adding triple the amount of chakra as the others, even then he barely felt the drain. I want one of each of you to supervise each group. The last one will spar with and assist Cassandra. Naruto sighed as he stepped outside before a mask of cold aloofness came over his face. Walking through the door he made his way towards the Shinobi Academy for the last time. He made good time jumping from roof to roof before jumping down into the courtyard. He ignored the whispering around him as he made his way to Aruka's classroom. A momentary smile flickered across his face when he thought about Aruka. He was one of the few people Naruto actually talked with. Even then it had taken Aruka nearly three years to get through to him and prove that he had no wish to harm him. Today is the first day of the rest of your life son, and I am proud of you. Minato whispered to him before settling in the back of his mind. Thank you father. Naruto replied. Is there anything that I should know about Uzumaki-san Hokage-sama? A Jonin instructor asked. Yes. Don't be discouraged if Naruto doesn't open up to you or his teammates right away. He is a very private person and it will take a while before he trusts you. Though he is a very loyal friend once you earn his trust and I don't there isn't anything he wouldn't do for someone close to him. Serutobi told them. Also never underestimate him, it could very well be the last mistake you ever make. Thank you Hokage-sama. The Jonin replied with a polite bow. Perhaps they can help you find greater happiness Naruto and help you to open yourself up more to the world. Serutobi thought as he continued observing the classroom with his viewing orb. Pushing the door open Naruto walked inside. A few of the students were already there but most were standing outside. Nodding toward Shino Abarame he walked over and sat in his usual seat. Fifteen minutes later the bell rang and everyone else shuffled into the room. Except for Ino and Sakura who were arguing about who got to sit next to the last Uchiha. Pathetic. Naruto thought with disgust, even if it didn't show up on his face. They don't act like real Kunoichi at all. They'll soon find out that this isn't a game or about dating the cutest guy. If not they'll be killed or raped. Although Ino could make something of herself if she at least applied herself. I think Sakura is a lost cause. I don't know about that son, she does have pretty good chakra control. Minato spoke up. Naruto just snorted. That's because her reserves are so pathetic. Naruto replied with a mental sneer. Everyone settled down. Aruka called out from in front of the class. Today is the last day most of you will spend in this classroom. All of you have passed the genin exams as assigned by the council. I want you all to know how proud of you I am but know that you are taking on a big responsibility. You are no longer children, but adults and ninja of Konohagakure. Everything you do from now on will reflect on the reputation of Konoha so be careful. Now everyone be patient please while I read off the team assignments. Once they are listed please gather with your teammates and wait for your Janin sensei. Naruto tuned out the assignments for the most part only listening to most of the names he recognized. Haruno Sakura, Uchiha Sasuke, and Aburame Shino are assigned to Team 7. Your Jonin sensei is Hitaki Kakashi. Aruka read off his scroll. Poor Ni-san, a fangirl, an emo avenger, and a mute. 
Naruto thought with a smirk. Serves him right with what he, Obito and Rin put me through when we first got together. Minato told him. Naruto could almost see his father rubbing his hands together like some cliché TV villain. Maybe he can bring out the potential you see in Sakura but I have my doubts, Naruto told him. Yamanaka Ino, Akamichi Choji and Narashikamaru are assigned to Team 10. Your Jonin Sensei is Seru Tobi Asuma. Inazuka Kiba, Hayuga Hanata and Uzumaki Naruto are assigned to Team 8. Your Jonin Sensei is Yuhi Kuranai. It could be a lot worse. Naruto thought. The Inazuka is kind of a loud mouth and the Hayuga is a little on the strange side though. Naruto swore that he almost heard his father chuckling in the back of his mind. Naruto looked around the room to locate his two teammates. He nodded at Kiba who he caught looking towards him before looking for Hanada. Finding her in the upper right corner he saw that she was blushing again while trying to hide within her coat. Before he could think further on it a knock sounded on the door before it was opened allowing the group of Jonin instructors entrance. Team 10 with a me. A bearded Jonin, Seru Tobi Asuma called out from around his unlit cigarette. Team 8. The red-eyed Jonin Yuhi Kuranai said after him. Naruto stood and followed her outside. Please follow me to training ground 14. Naruto almost felt bad when he heard Uruka telling Team 7 that they would have to wait for their Jonin instructor to arrive. Almost. Even if Kakashi wasn't always as chronically late as used to be he still took his time getting places, unless ordered by the Hokage to be on time. I still wish you had given Naruto to me Hokage-sama, Kakashi told the aged cage. Kakashi's almost whining, the Hokage thought amused. I know Kakashi but the council wishes for you to help the Uchiha with his bloodline once he awakens it. Serutobi told him with a neutral expression. Your team would become unbalanced with Naruto on it considering his already considerable power. Besides with this Naruto gets a chance to be exposed to a different aspect of ninja techniques and might even be able to become friends with his teammates. With the way Naruto talked about the Uchiha and young Ms. Haruno I doubt that they would have gotten along. Also, you will still be able to teach and spar with Naruto on your time off. You are dismissed Kakashi. Damn. Kakashi thought. At least I tried. Hi Hokage-sama. The silver-haired Jonin sighed before disappearing in a swirl of leaves. The group was silent as they ran towards the training ground. The Genin got a good look at the training ground as they jumped down from the trees. It was surrounded on two sides by trees with the third a calm river. Several training posts and targets were situated on the left side while the right was where they sat down. Kuranai gave her team a small smile. Please let us share things about ourselves so that we can get to know one another, and what you think you could use more work on. I shall go first. I am Yuhi Kuranai. I like dango, hot sake, green tea, genjutsu and spending time with my best friend Anko. I dislike perverts, smoking and judgmental people. My dream is to prove that genjutsu is just as useful as any other area of study and to be a good sensei. Genjutsu is my strongest area while ninjutsu is my worst. She told them before motioning towards Kiba. I am Inazuka Kiba. Kiba said loudly. I like my nin dog partner Akamaru, my family, training, hot girls and pranks. I hate cats, people who are cruel to animals and sushi. My dream for the future is to become a powerful janin, become clan head, and have a wife and a bunch of pups. I am the best at taijutsu and working with Akamaru while worst at ninjutsu and genjutsu. A little loud and wild perhaps but I think we can work with this. Kuranai thought before motioning towards Hanada. Naruto really wasn't surprised much by Kiba's reply except that he wanted to be clan head. As far as he knew Inazuka Hana was still clan heir. He had met the girl before and she had been somewhat nice to him. I I am Hayuga H Hanada. Hanada stuttered shyly, poking her index fingers together. I L like D dumplings, my little sister Hanabi, P pressing flow Nari and. Naruto thought that she darted a quick look over at him but couldn't be sure. I d dislike th those th at put down others so th at they can feel better a b o oot themselves. I also d dislike those that s c kindness as a w weakness. My dream is to become clan head and unite both branches. I am g good at taijutsu and c chakra c control and worst at ninjutsu. Oh Hanada, look at what your father has done to your confidence. Kuranai thought. I promise that I will help you improve yourself. What do you think I should tell them dad? Naruto asked his father. 
I don't think they would betray me but you never know. They are your teammates, so give them something. Don't tell them everything though. Like you said, you don't trust them yet. It's not nice to think about but even your closest friends can become enemies and traitors. His father advised him. Look at what happened with the Sanin. I am Uzumaki Naruto. Naruto spoke. I am 15 years old and have just now passed the exam since I actually tried this time. I enjoy spending time with my friends Cassandra and Hajira or my godfather. I like ramen, cooking, training, plants and spending times outdoors. I dislike those that judge others for things they don't have any say over and for how there are those in Konoha that society has forgotten about. My dream for the future is to protect those close to me. I think that I am well-rounded in most areas but there is always room for improvement in everything we do in life. He gave some basic information but he was slightly evasive about what he was good at or needed to work upon. Interesting. Kurunai thought. Just as Hokage-sama said he would. Interesting you three. Kurunai spoke. Unfortunately although you passed the entrance exam at the academy you are not officially genin yet. W what did you m mean Kurunai-sensei? Hanada asked. The academy exams is used to weed out those that don't have what it takes to make genin with an official janin sensei Kuranai told them. So every janin sensei comes up with their own way of further testing their teams. Not all teams pass but those that do are the ones that will normally succeed as genin. Those who fail are sent back to the academy for more training and are then sent to the reserve corp who are then taught in large groups instead of small four-man cells. The end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.